let's talk about base saturation of soils. We we touched on the concept of base saturation in the previous unit, in the pH and alkalinity or the pH or acidity and alkalinity unit. Well, let's talk about it in more detail here. And base saturation is simply the amount of basic cations that are held on the cation exchange sites. And so those basic cations are comprised of calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. These are the basic cations or bases. Now, when we determine CEC, I mentioned in the previous video that we determine these four elements or basic cations, and oftentimes pH as a function of the amount of hydrogen ions that are present. And I failed to mention that we also need to include the amount of aluminum and iron on the exchange sites if we're talking about soils that have the potential to be acidic or very acidic, or even slightly acidic. And so when we look at the cations that are on the exchange sites, they're, they're typically dominated by calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, hydrogen, depending on pH, and aluminum and iron, depending on pH. And so we need to account for all the cations on the exchange sites to determine CEC. To determine base saturation, it's a function of the amount of calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium as compared to all the cations or charges on the exchange sites. So how do we calculate percent base saturation? Base saturation is simply the amount of basic cations on the exchange sites. So here's a soil with quite a few positive charges or cations adhered to the outside. And if we split these charges into the bases or basic cations and the ones that generate acidity, and then we added up the charge, we would note that there's 12 positive charges with respect to the basic cations and 12 positive charges with respect to the cations that can generate acidity. Now, if you recall that when aluminum is kicked off the exchange sites, it doesn't generate acidity directly, right? Aluminum undergoes hydrolysis and in the presence of water, aluminum can generate three free hydrogen ions via hydrolysis and that is acid so that's why aluminum and if we had iron in here as well iron plus three they would be considered acids along with if hydrogen was on this slide and so the base saturation is simply a function of the total cec which in this case we could say is 24 and how much of the bases are present out of 24 which is 12. So the C, the base saturation percentage would be probably 50%. It would be a good guess. In fact, it would be correct. So how do you calculate it? I just stated it. You calculate the mill equivalence of basic cations per 100 grams, and you divide that by the, mil, the CEC, which is in mill equivalents per 100 grams, and you multiply that by 100 to determine percent BS, base saturation. Okay. So let's let's do a simple example. And let's say either the testing lab provided you these values that you see on the screen or you calculated those and you learn how to calculate these values that you see on the screen in the previous video when we were determining CEC. So a soil is extracted and it has these concentrations in milliequivalents per 100 grams of calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium and aluminum. So what is the CEC of the soil and what's the base saturation of the soil? And then we're going to use, of course, this equation to calculate base saturation. Very simple. So let's do some math. So here are the numbers from the previous slide, the concentrations of all five of those elements in milliequivalents per 100 grams. To determine the CEC, all you do is simply add all of these numbers together. And if you do that, the CEC equals 
mill equivalents per 100 grams. You could play the puzzle and you could be asked, what's the set, what's the soil texture? And you would go to a table that matches CEC up to texture and it's probably a loam. So how do you determine base saturation? The first step is to add up all of the basic cations only. Calcium, this is potassium, this is magnesium, and this is sodium in terms of milliequivalents per 100 grams from the very top of the slide. That equals 12.5. And then you take this number in conjunction with this number and plug it into this, into this equation. Here's the equation down here. 12.5 divided by 17.5 times 100 equals 71.4%. That's the base saturation. And you could play the game of, oh, I learned something about base saturation and um, a curve as compared to pH in the unit three. And if you went back to unit three in your notes and looked at that curve, you would likely realize that this soil has a pH of about six and a half. It should. Then you could measure pH and quantify that or, or uh, correlate that to your guess. So that's the base saturation. So here's that curve. All right, the previous problem on the previous slide showed us that there was 71% base saturation. So what's the pH? 71% is roughly where this point is. And if you go up to the curve and over, it's 6.5. So a good question to ask yourself is, do we need to lime this soil? You, you probably don't need to lime this soil. It's at the sweet spot. If you go back to your notes and look at where all those nutrients in that colored graph that I showed you, where they line up, it's somewhere around 6.5. You do not need to lime this soil. This is a nice soil. So let's say soil has an initial pH of 5.5, and we want to increase the pH to 6.5. How much do we need to increase the base saturation by? We need to increase it according to this figure from pH 5.5 to 6.5, we want to go from about 50% to 70%. So we need to increase it by 20%, right? And you could do some math. I'm not going to share with you the math, but you could do some math and determine how much of a liming source to add to increase the pH from 5.5 to 6.5 based on the math and the tables that I share with you in the previous unit, unit three. And lo and behold, when you do that math, you change the base saturation 20%. So if you're gonna lime a soil, there's no need to determine how much to change the base saturation. What you need to do is just lime the soil and change the pH and the base saturation will respond accordingly. Let me share with you, I think this is the final slide in this set. Let me throw this up here. Oops. Okay. Let me go back. So in this example that I shared with you earlier, this is a soil sample from Colorado. And when you look at the percent saturation in this soil, the percent base saturation is 100. Why is it 100? The sample or the soil is dominated by calcium and magnesium and to lesser extents, potassium and sodium. Look at the amount of hydrogen on the exchange sites. There's hardly any hydrogen on the exchange sites because this soil is at a pH of almost eight. The amount of hydrogens present in this soil are extremely low. So if this, if anything, this ties back to unit three when we discuss pH and the pH scale. And if you go back and take a look at the very beginning of unit three and the pH scale, when a pH of a solution is eight, that means that the concentration of hydrogen is 10 to the minus eight. It's so small, it's negligible. And so the base saturation in this soil sample is 100. Okay, this is the, this is the puzzle. This is the soil fertility puzzle. Now, Let's look at one more slide. And I already gave you part of this answer. Based on the base percent base saturation, what's the soil pH? 
showed it to you on the previous slide. It's about eight. Is it acid neutral basic? It's eight. And if you don't believe me, you can go, if you don't believe the soil testing lab that sent that sample, and you could go back to your notes from this class to this particular curve and guesstimate what the pH is. You have 100% base saturation. Where's my mouse? There's 100% base saturation. If you go up and over, you're at about pH 8. The soil fertility puzzle, I hope, is coming together for you. And that is the end of unit four.